mind. Utterly ridiculous that an actor, 15 and a half stone actor, should really be attempting Mount Everest is quite ridiculous. I mean, to get the whole thing set up has been such a... It's such, you've had to be so single-minded about the whole thing. It's been to the exclusion of, of absolutely pretty well everything else. You've heard of several kinds of cat and my opinion always... But Brian Blessed's actually intending a serious climb of Mount Everest. He's recreating the 1924 climb of George Mallory, who was last seen just 800 feet from the summit. There we are, one of the classics. That was Frenesy from Artie Shaw and his orchestra. And this evening's guest is actor Brian Blessed. Now, Mallory, Brian, is a, a hero figure of yours, I know. Is, is it a, a hero figure from oh, long back? Oh, since I was a child, I saw him in the rover, the hotspur. There he is, his photograph with Irving. They're both all, they're all my heroes. But Irving, I mean, Mallory fired us all. He was the one that did the reconnaissance. He did the 22, he did the 24. He was rather a bit like Ahab and the White Whale. He was obsessed, but he was called Sir Galahad. Mm. And when Sir Galahad finally put his hand on the chalice, he disappeared on, on and, uh, and, and Mallory, when he was last seen going through the mists, disappeared. It's, it's rather marvellous, really. I'm obsessed like Mallory. I can't get rid of this obsession. If, if, if you told me we weren't going, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Captain Noel uh, is, is kind of a hero of so many people. He fired the first bullet in the First World War. He was the first white man to get within 40 miles of Everest from, the, from India. He darkened his skin, darkened his hair, and he made this journey from four months' leave from the army. But nobody could go there. They were forbidden to go. Nepal on the other side it forbid anybody to come into their country. The Tibetans forbid anybody to come into their country. That's why I disguised myself as a Tibetan. I browned my skin with walnut dye and came to uh, a penagna to potash. I dyed my face and my hands as I wore Tibetan dress. For the moments of happiness, we had the experience. Uh, the, the British have been trying since about the middle Oh, 1900s, uh, uh, to try to get to Everest. It was called Everest because of Sir George Everest. Mm. His actual name is Chomolungma. It's also uh, called from uh, the Nepalese side, Sagamatha, and it has other names as well. It's the meaning and approach to the meaning. Their expedition was about being fearless. And we, you know, we just want to, it's, it's a kind of cry for freedom. That's why we're doing it. It's, it's to get, help people to find their own Everest. I'm going to ride that horse. I'm going to say I love that person. I'm going to do my allotment. I'm going to do that before I die. Because governments keep us so damn frustrated and they bottle us down. I suppose that's where I'm going. Restores the experience in a different form. Lord Hunt, you led the successful 1953 ascent of Hillary and Tensing. How do you feel about Mallory? Well, I think he's one of those people who almost belongs to a bygone age in the sense that for him, mountaineering in those days was uh, so much more than a sport or uh, a skill. It was uh, almost a religion. For him, it was a spiritual experience. And I don't say that there aren't people, I'm afraid I'm one of them, who finds a spiritual um, uplift in the, in the mountains. But that was very much his approach in those days. And um, certainly that appealed to me as a romantic small boy. I just wonder if I'm fit enough. I've been running hard since September. Do you think I'm all right? Do you think I'm? I think you'll be fine. I have every faith you'll be perfectly all right. You'll go up and you'll come down, no trouble. I'm quite sure. I have no, I have no qualms at all. I know Ruth Mallory thought that about um, George as well, but uh, I really don't uh, have any worries at all that you won't come back perfectly safely. I think you probably will have problems when you come back. I'm sure you'll have problems and things that you'll have to get over. 
but it might do you the world of good. Um, I think mostly between your ears is where you need sorting out. I used to see the, the, the northeast ridge as a child. I used to talk to my father about it. Why do I keep seeing this mountain, Daddy? And, and, and the colours were always very grey. And, and I've dreamt about it for years and years since I was a teenager and then up to being in my 20s. And the colours have become more vibrant. It's very interesting recently dreaming about it and suddenly I see it much clearer, a full colour. I, I just feel we're going for the right reasons. We're going with flowers, we're going with prayers, we're going with the right attitude. And, and I think the mountain will be kind to us. She'll be good to us in the end. So many primers, Charles, they seem thin and tall or small. Yes, uh, well, that's can, heavy, can heavy men do well? I, they take it easy. Well, Don Willans was very heavy, wasn't he? Yes. Before yes. he died. Yes. I'm 53. How do you feel about that? What can you advise me about my age? Really, we'll get better information about that from Chris Bonington, who's, uh, who's done it. I don't think it really makes much odds, if you think of it, actually, in that dreadful K2 disaster um, a few years ago. The two people who actually survived that were the two 50-year-olds, Kurt Deenberger and um, an Austrian. They were the two people who actually walked out of it. I think as you get older, in actual fact, you build up a kind of a long-term stamina. You might actually, you might get tireder than other people do, but you keep going. Everest yeah. is a very high mountain sure. and is a very dangerous mountain. Mm. You are, I know, a mountaineer of, of I don't well, know how we, experienced. How yeah. much have you done? Well, I've done a lot, John, but I'm not an inspired mountaineer. I'm a plodder, a slow plodder at best. Ellie, just one step more. My body is suited to other sports, really, wrestling, judo, something like that. I'm a heavy man. I'm 50 now, still. I'm not fatter. It's got big bones, but I don't really suit <coughs> the great mountains at all. I mean, the mountaineers are usually quite thin, small, thin, tall. I'm a very heavy bear-like man, really. You've got a good girth, which I think is a good thing. You've got plenty of fat to live on as you actually do it. I shall start at 15 and a half stone. When I'm finished, I'll be an old man. My hair will be grayed. I'll be shrunken. I'll be about nine stone. I'll be in a terrible state, and I won't have any voice. That's the kind of state I'll probably be in. I'll be right at the end of my tether. It's no point in going on um, without you doing it, because um, the whole house is just... It, all it hears from you from morning to night is, is the same old story. And uh, really, we can't listen to the story any longer. You've got to go and make your film and tell everybody else your story because uh, 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 we can't listen to it anymore. Why does one always want to sing when one's in the Tyrol? <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful here in the Tyrol. I'm, I'm rather nonplussed. Um, I'm, I'm usually quite a very expressive and a big mouth character, but for once I'm rather in awe of the personage I'm going to meet, Reinhold Mesner, who is a legend in his own lifetime. It's absolutely impossible to evaluate this extraordinary man. When I think of Mesner, I see landscapes and storms and mountains and arets and burgessians and a man fighting against the elements this extraordinary character. And Chris Bonington said that he is, in all probability, the greatest mountaineer who's ever lived. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Happy to see you. Nice to see you. I'm Brian Blesser. It's nice. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> You're going to Everest, I guess. I'm going to Everest, yes, that's right. And I'm going to seek your advice on the whole thing. The briefing is, is basic thing that, that it's important for going up. The, the lack of oxygen is the basic problem on Everest. If Everest would be like Mont Blanc or like the Matterhorn, it would be easy for thousands of people. But it's 29,000 feet high. And for this is getting a problem, especially on the, on the last 3,000 feet. So for a long time, people were thinking they have, to, they have to do the same breathing system like in the Alps, and it's wrong. And if you look at the Sherpas, how they do, the Tibetans, when they cross high, high passes, they do it in a way that they, they go very quickly for 10 steps, 20 steps. They do a rest, breathing very quickly, hyperventilating. They breathe very quickly? Very quickly, hyperventilating. In what way? Show me now, yes. do it. <laughs> very quickly, it's no problem. And afterwards, you, you do a rest and you go again in a, in a slower breathing. And when you are strong again, you start again for a, a, a small run, let's say also a run. 
And I am using exactly the system Tibetans and Sherpas are using because I say to myself, they know how to handle it because they do it since thousands of years. We came only 100 years ago, we Westerners, to do this. And we can only copy them because they have more experience than we have. What horrified me many years ago, Charles, was reading about the blood. At high altitude, apparently it thickens. What is that process? Well, that's right. It, it does because more red cells get made in response to the lack of oxygen. And so you get into the situation where your blood gets thicker and thicker and it can sludge up and, and uh, give you blood clots in various places. And the, 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 what it, it means to you is that it's very, very important that you keep enough fluid intake. So you don't get dehydrated, which of course is very easy at altitude. I think probably the most important thing is to keep eating and drinking, and perhaps drinking most of all. You need something like nine or ten pints a day, and that takes an awful lot of, firstly, of cooking it, of melting the snow, and then of drinking it. And at times you just don't feel like being bothered to cook, or you don't feel like being bothered to drink it. And I'd say, if you can keep eating and drinking, you're going to survive most things. Now, I'm a great believer in uh, honey. Did you have much honey? Yes, on the I expedition? took honey because I learned in the uh, in the Alps when I used to climb with Petronides rather that honey is an extraordinary quality. It's a remunerative, a vigorous effect on you. It goes straight into your blood from honey. If you take sugar. You don't benefit for several hours till your digestion has assimilated and passed it into your blood. But honey, the vitality of honey goes right into your blood right away. You almost got to take one step at a time. You set yourself, I set myself targets. I set myself 10 paces. And I'm going to say, right, I'm going to take 10 paces without a rest. And you get to the eighth pace, and everything in you wants to stop. And the last step is depending from the first step. The first step is depending from the last step. It's a very good view. If you start for Everest, it's depending. If you like to reach the summit, you have to start right. And you have just to know when you start for the first step, what is the last step. Otherwise, you, your beginning is wrong. So the last step is de depending on the first step. And the first step is depending on the last step. It's a clear rule in mountaineering. Uh, I, I've got bad feet. I've got lousy feet and strong bones, and the bones seem to press through the skin and blister them. I've been trying since September to harden my feet. They seem hard now. I've got to keep an eye on my feet. I take cold well, and I, I though I'm an outgoing person, <clears throat> in actual fact, I'm very quiet. Yes, and uh, there is something very selfish about uh, doing something like this. It's all right having um, high floating ideas. Maori very grandly said, you know, that uh, the biggest danger in life is not taking the adventure. And it's easy to let that go trickling off the tongue, you know, it sounds all very good. But in actual fact, I'm, I'm, I don't know where I'm going, but there's something very selfish about it. And uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Bonington, um, Chris Bonington feels very strongly that Maori, you know, was very selfish in what he did, going up there for the third time. Uh, he, he said, you've got to be selfish, otherwise you, you, you won't get up there. You, you, you've got to be single-minded. He said, you do understand. He was rather furious with me once. He said, you're being so noble and lovely. You've got to, if you're going to get up there, you've got to be ambitious. You've got to be selfish. I have a fear of hallucinating and, and, and not being in control of myself. Is that a problem? No, I think it's a great help. Hallucinating is a great help, and especially if you are alone, in a difficult situation, alone for a long time, and putting out all your energy you have, really, because you need it. On Everest Summit, I was so finished that I could only sit down and I forgot everything. I forgot either that I was there. And especially on the way up, I left my rucksack in in the, in the last stand. And before I left my last bivouac, I had the rucksack as a partner. And afterwards, I didn't have any more my rucksack to speak to somebody. And I, I became schizophrenic, I could say. But this being two persons in one, it was a help for me that I, because I could speak to myself, I could discuss problems, I, I could tell to myself that I'm tired. 
And so I could understand it easier. And could you actually see another human being, or could you see yourself? Not on, not on, not on Everest uh, solo ascent. On Everest solo ascent, I had a, a lot of discussions about Mother and Irving telling, really, they were up there, it's possible, and uh, I had quite a feeling they could still be up there. Did you feel you were conversing but with I thought, Yes. yes. And I brought the llamas back to England for a year with the llamas, llamas, and I got to know him very well. And we have spent hours and hours and hours together in silence, trying to contact Mallory and Irving through the spirit world. And we did. We produced an apparition showing the two men what happened to them. We saw Mallory fall into a crevasse. We saw Irving, I imagine, trying to look down into the crevasse. And then it vanished. Dream. Do you fantasize to get into the top of that? Yes, I do. And it's taken over and it's starting to kind of rule my life. Do you think you can? Yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I do. I keep, I keep listening to what Mesner said about the first step and the last step yeah. you know, being joined mm. together. And that's rather taken over my psyche. Is this normal? You cannot do it with your, with your brain. You can only learn it through your instincts. We are not going up to, 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 to die there. We, going, we go up to, to survive, to, to go on the, on the limit between death and life. You and the summit are one thing. You will reach it like a bullet aiming to a target. The target and the bullet and yourself, they are becoming ones. And so they will meet in one moment in, in the right place and in the right spot. You must understand, Mother, that I'm not going to take any risks at all. Uh, it would have been all my life quite pointless to you know, want to get up things, get up mountains, if there wasn't an element of, of danger that I might fall off the thing. I'm not going to be foolish. If I find it too tough in the end, I, I, I'll turn back. Shall I go? You don't care. Why is that? Eh? And I'll remember you all at home, and that'll, that'll remind me if I think of you. But I'm not going to be foolish. Well, don't you bite me. I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to have a go, do my very best, but then have the good sense to turn back if the weather and the mountain proves too much. So you're not to worry. Lots of love. Bye-bye. I'd like to get this film right. I'd like to get it right for them and for all explorers and for all people everywhere who want to do something. I want to get it right. I want to get something right. I have never got anything right in my life. Does that sound stupid? Ow! Ow! Oh! Left, 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 left.
my first view of the Himalayas. Everest is out there somewhere, but where? Darjeeling, March 23rd, 1924. Dearest Ruth, I think of you often and with ever so much love and wish for your company. Would there were some way of bringing you nearer I think the nearness depends very much on the state of one's imagination. I know you must have been feeling lonely some evenings. I want to take you in my arms and kiss you. Here it's a great holiday time and you're not with me. But we'll have a wonderful holiday when I get back, won't we? My love to the children, ever your loving George. But th there's a lot of twaggle talked about Maori. I feel total twaggle. And since I've been here, I've been intensely kind of in a, a strange state and feeling things from all my studies of him. And I'm no expert. Other people know more, much more about him than I do. I've never met the man. Never met him. But for instance, there is... You asked me when we were back in England why, uh, what Maori felt about Everest and himself and so forth. Well, now, with my experience since I've been here, I think what I said was twaddle. Very strange being here, the Planters Club. This is where they stayed, the 1924 expedition, and the 22, and the reconnaissance. They all stayed here. Gosh, it's all run down. Maori, Irving, Somerville, Beetham, General Bruce, they all stayed here. It's funny, the Planters have all gone now. It's rather like a ghost club. All gone. In fact, they're all dead. Captain Noel was the last to die a few months ago. A very strange feeling. It's very beautiful. Gorgeous atmosphere of decay. Ah, it's 
Wonderful to be here. Darjeeling looks wonderful. Exactly as I pictured it. Wonderful. I love the green and yellow on the walls. And the feeling of decay. This is the last outpost of the Raj. The very last outpost before they stepped off the map. It's a long, long trail of winding into the land of my dreams where the nightingales are singing and a white moon beams. There's a long, long night of waiting until my dreams all come true till the day that I'll be going down that long, long trail with you.
Your Holiness, it's a great privilege to be here. And I must look so ridiculous to you. Are you really? I'm going to... Uh, going to have a climb? Yes, I am. I'm going, I'm going to climb in this. Mm. And uh, these boots. And this. <laughs> <laughs> and a little hat, and a scarf, and a few jerseys, you see. Well, I'm quite crazy, just like the English were crazy. You, but it is... Then, then you find I, some, I, just had, I think some difficulties. The modern, how is the modern clothes? These are much better. Uh, yes, yeah. the, the modern clothes, you can go to the moon on the modern clothes. But of so. course, also <laughs> your will. Uh, yes, I, I so admire your, your will. Very good. <laughs> Does, does, I, I notice that with uh, uh, holy men throughout history, you tend to be in the mountains, you tend to go high. Does this help in your prayer and meditation? To be high at, at to a certain altitude, does it help to be in the mountains to help your meditation and prayer? Yes, certain practice, you see, it is very useful, very helpful. You see, before you gain the spiritual experience, you may find more difficult to breathe because of the, ox the lack of oxygen. <laughs> so then you have to, you see, uh, you have to consider more balanced way. Either the oxygen more important or spiritual experience more important. <laughs> that's, that's, that you have to judge. <laughs> so, Your Holiness, I, I, I think a middle-aged man here, dressed in the 1920s clothes, very much needs a lot of blessing. And uh, I would be very, it'd be a great privilege, and I'd be very grateful if you would bless me, Your Holiness. Usually, you see, according to Tibetan custom, tradition, the scarf, now this uh, sometimes you see, uh, symbolize as a bless, I mean, symbolize blessing. So I would like to give you this as a form of my uh, prayer, as a blessing. So then uh, all your wish will be Materialize. So no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In tropical climes there are certain times of day when all the citizens retire to take their clothes off and perspire. It's one of those rules the greatest fools obey because the sun is far too sultry and one must avoid its ultraviolet ray. <laughs> The natives grieve when the white men leave their huts because they're obviously, definitely nuts. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The Japanese don't care to, the Chinese wouldn't dare to. Hindus and Argentines sleep firmly from 12 to 1, but Englishmen deter stars, yes sir. At 12 noon, the natives swoon and no further work is done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. What, uh, what is this? Oh, what is Azara? Azara? <laughs> yeah. ah. yes. And this? This. This is juice. Juice? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's oh. good. That's very good. This is Emma. 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 Yeah. Emma. <laughs> what do you... Uh, this, this, what is that? What is... This is, what is this? It's me, Lamaga. What? Oh, it's me, Lamaga. It's me, Lamaga. Lamaga. Ah, what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? This is Saladol. <laughs> Saladol? Yeah. Ah, ah salad. Saladol. Salad oil. Oh, Saladol. Ah. Salad. Yeah. Saladol. Mm. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> No. You don't believe in the yeti? Yes. What about the yak yeti, the one that has his hair on his head? Do you believe in that? No, no, I don't believe in the yak yeti. <laughs> I've never heard it and I've never seen it. You've never seen it yet?
around here. Are there any Yetis around here? I don't. You don't think so? No. <laughs> any Yetis around here, PK? No. Look, uh, you have seen a Yeti. Yes. What was it like? It's like a man. How big? How tall? I think bigger than you. Bigger than me? <laughs> Very big. But face looks like you. Face looks like yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> Yaroslav, the great change was coming up to the plains after walking in a small mountain valley to debouch into a great grey arid basin among rolling hills where everything was unfriendly and far. But in the evening light, this country can be beautiful. The harshness becomes subdued. Shadows soften the hillsides. There is a blending of lines and folds until the last light so that one comes to bless the absolute barrenness, feeling that here is a beauty of form, a kind of ultimate harmony. I can't believe I'm here, you know? Sure good as long, eh? White glass, the white glass rocky fort. I dreamt about this since I was 10. I have to read about it in books. I mean, just think, I mean, he was here, the Lama. The Lama was here 70 years ago, and Maori, Noel, Somerville, they all came up here. They all came up here, and he was dressed in silk. He, he entertained them here with, with a 12-course meal and sweetmeats. And, and, he, and, he, and, and down there with his own pen, he, he organized dances and games. And this way it took place. I, I, I never thought I'd ever be here. I never thought I'd ever be here. I mean, this is, this is a fairy story. This is, this is fable Shikar Zong. This is the most incredible place in Tibet. And it's as high as Mont Blanc. I can see the north face, I can see the Hohenbein 
Kowar, I can see the final pyramid, I can see the top. I think, yeah. I see. I think that that's where. Uh, just, just, just where Barry is. I just can't. I can't believe I'm here. I mean, it's just, it's just a dream come true. It's just so beautiful. This is the highest monastery in the world, a gateway to Everest. Seventy years ago, there were over 200 monks here. The head lama was a reincarnation of the god Chongrise, and he gave Maori his blessing before he went onto the mountain. the expedition in appreciation for what you for your blessing and for your ceremony we would like you to have this for you it is for you and all your monks and your nuns she looks very different here from the last position. It's very intimidating. And it looks dreadful from any side. I mean, all this, as Mallory said, any idea of an easy snow slope is rubbish. People saying it's, uh, there are easy routes up Everest. I mean, it looks absolutely terrifying. Captain Noel said to me when I arrived here, he said, you'll be intimidated, blessed, when you see it. It's so big, it fills the screen. It, it filled the whole of my camera, but don't be intimidated. Take it step by step. And he said, need lots of honey. The guy that's sick either stays there resting or if he's good enough maybe he wants to start down or we'll see how that goes. This rope team of three goes to the summit and we've fulfilled the function of the climb with three standing on this summit together. <laughs> we think it's going to be very interesting because we know the Chinese. the Chinese are going to want it, but we're going to, t we're going to tell them they led, they five put route into five, and, six. and it's, it's Americans and Soviet turn. Put the Chinese in the middle, <laughs> switch leads. Okay. I don't know what else to do. I can't believe there are all these standards. Who are all these people? Chinese, American, Russian, Kiwi, Peter Habler? <laughs> Where do I fit in? Tashi Delhi. Shh. 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 And 
the end of the valley and above the glacier, Everest rises not so much as a peak as a prodigious mountain mass. There is no complication for the eye. The highest mountain in the world is lord of all, unchallenged and isolated in her supremacy. Base camp, May 1st. Dearest one, I must tell you how wonderfully fit I've been these last days. Much better than in 21 or 22. I feel full of energy and strength. I sleep long and well, and my digestion is good. Dearest, you must know that the spur to do my best is you and you again. I shall think of you often at the higher camps, and the thought of you will be present in the most important decisions. We shall need good fortune. And the greatest good fortune is some constant kindness in Mount Everest herself. For we must remember that the highest of mountains has a severity so awful and fatal that the wisest of men do well to think and tremble, even on the threshold of their high endeavor. Peter Habler, it's a great privilege to meet you. I've always wanted to meet you for years. After you did that first ascent without oxygen on Everest with Mesner, I hear that you're on the West Ridge. Now, what advice can you give me about Everest? I, I couldn't give you any advice because, I mean, you're Mallory, you know? Mallory's going up there. It's not you, you Mallory's. So, what, what the hell could I give you advice? Jesus. Uh, Don't do just it. Just slowly, yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Slowly, slowly, you know. Slowly. And uh, I could give the advice I would give to myself, okay? Yeah. I'm listening to my body. I'm listening to my breathing, to the sound of my breathing, somehow to my brain. And if I hear, and that was also 78, if I hear some funny noises inside, then I go down. You know, I'm going up there and I think, well, this is madness. I mean, what, what, what is reality? What is real? I mean, maybe, I, mean I, I just received the news the other day. It came out of that camp over yonder that my first, uh, my first daughter, Kathy, has been injured thousands of miles, miles away in Omar. She's had a car accident. She's got internal injuries. Now I'm here. I can't do it. I'm impotent. What the hell am I doing here? I'm scared of the mountain. I'm unqualified to go up there. I'm following a dream. I'm selfish. I've abandoned everybody. Uh, the daughter now needs me. What the hell am I? What the bloody hell am I doing here? You're evil. You're evil. You're the wild man from Armenia, soloing the West Ridge. What do you make of all these? The mountains now getting all with these flags. I mean, I don't understand the nationality, what has to do with mountain climbing. I don't understand. For example, Mallory, I love him. I don't know really. I think it is England. I don't know really. Yeah? For me, it's Mallory. Mallory, the man who climbed this Everest, tried at least. Maybe also he climbed coming back time, died. I don't know. Basically, what it belongs to is two spots are ours. We'll give up one spot yeah. to one or the other of the two teams, and they'll have to choose between them who that is. Well, that's, that's the question, is who's going to be left? I think. Katya should stand down. She hasn't even made it to five yet. I don't like these uh, big expeditions at all because they remember me and the army. One is leader, second leader, third leader, manager, camp manager. I saw Tibetan here. I mean Chinese, they are Chinese. Okay, they say, I'm going to camp three. I think this man is not man for camp three and two yak going with him. I think, excuse me, 
Yeah, also going camp three. <laughs> camp three, I had my camp one on the north coast, 1987. Camp one, north coast. Camp three must be under the top or so. So the three great nations have got together in peace. This is a good thing, to climb a great mountain. This is what you're saying. And if this can be achieved on Everest, it can be achieved anywhere in the world. People are people. Huh? Is that what you're saying, Slavic? No problem. No problem. <laughs> we don't talk about this. Oh, yeah. If they, you know, it is to shame, really. One side, the invasion in other countries, Chinese in Tibet, Russian in uh, Afghanistan, America in Panama, and they make peace, you know. They cheat us, they cheat the human being, you know. That is that the Hila Mallory didn't do it. Mallory was just for climbing. Uh, nine, at least nine uh, summit attempts with oxygen. <laughs> hey, Jim, can you hear me okay? Hello, Mr. President, I sure can. Well, listen, I think back to our meeting in January, and here you are back at extraordinary heights. But listen, I wanted to simply send greetings on Earth Day uh, to you and, frankly, to all the climbers with you from the United States, China, and the Soviet Union. And, you know, reaching the top of Mount Everest in the name of peace and, and understanding uh, reminds all of us on this... You were looking in that scene at one particular phony, and that was me. I... They were so elated, the Americans, and talking to President Bush. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be uh, bad-mannered. I'm going to say congratulations and I'm shaking hands. But, of course, I, it was meaningless to me. I thought the whole thing was phony. It's, it almost soured the mountain for me. I wanted to kind of thump them all and shake them all. Shake them, to shake every damn one of them, you know. For God's sake, be bigger than that. Damn, for Stop being negative. Stop being bitchy about the Chinese. The Russians bitching the Chinese, the Americans bitching the Russians and this, that and the other. The Chinese are hiding uh, pittons and equipment on the mountain so the Russians can't use them. Idiotic, childish, immature sods, all of them. God. Just look at that. This is the central, the central Rombok Glacier. Look at it. Uh, Mallory said it was like the charge of the Light Brigade. And he, and he worked his way along that. They went right round there. And he couldn't, he couldn't find a way to the base of Everest. And they came back here. And then people have often criticized that he missed the East Rombok Glacier. That down there, that trickle, that minute little bit of snow, that's the fabled East Rombok Glacier. I said, Mercy, of course you missed it. You'd miss it, I'd miss it. And he came down here, it was a blizzard, it was snow, it'd been up there for weeks. And then he came down here and he went right round there, and he went down there for 100 miles, 150 miles, and he went all the way round the Carter Valley, right round there, to the Lac Pilar, and that's where I'm heading. I'm going to go up the East Rombok, and we'll see more of the scenery over there. But my God, what courage, hey?
of the head of the East Rumble Glacier. But Maori, in 1922, made one desperate attempt to get up the North Col. There it is, that dreaded North Col. His third attempt to get to the top of the mountain. And the hit, the hit is a terrible place. They're hit by an avalanche. And then they realized at least 10 were buried. And they raced to the bottom. There was a terrible crevasse. Some had gone over. And Maori was desperate. He got his ice axe. And then this right. Two hours. Two, like two, two hours. Three blows. I'm strong. Three blows. And I'm, I'm finished. And he cried his eyes out. He pulled and he pulled for two hours. And some of those, George, 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 stop it. They're dead. And Maori was in despair. He wrote to London. He, he wrote to everybody. The young husband he said, I am responsible. I killed him. He didn't shirk it. He's a great man. He didn't pass the fuck like people do today. He said, I killed them. I was responsible. He said, not out of recklessness. But he said, out of ignorance. We didn't understand the conditions. It was new to us. The Himalayas were new to us. And he resolved that in 1924, when he came back, whether a climber or a Sherpa would die. He felt that responsibility, and the scars weighed on him, and therefore he was determined somehow to, to, to climb that mountain to make up for the misdeeds of costing the life of seven Sherpas. Camp 3. Dear girl, the conditions are much worse than in 22. The temperature's lower and the wind more violent. My personal trouble has been a cough. It has been the devil. A burst of coughing fit to tear one's guts out. Besides which, of course, it has a very bad effect on one's going on the mountain. Still, the conquest of the mountain is the great thing, and the whole plan is mine. And my part will be a sufficiently interesting one and will give me, perhaps, the best chance of all of getting to the top. It's almost unthinkable that with this plan I shan't get to the top. I can't see myself coming down defeated. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Mm. Here we go. Oh. OK. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Jim. Ah, well, thank we're, you. We're thank absolutely, you. Well, Big Jim, it's absolutely been a dream come true. Well, we did it. We did it. Oh, but after this fabulous weather, isn't it wonderful? How many have you got on the top? After all of the wind and storm, now we've got these three days of clear weather. It's wonderful. So we put six on the summit the first day, and now we've got uh, three more uh, on the summit, and uh, we've got in the high camp, another six waiting. <laughs> so we could have a lot of summits. It has an allure, that mountain. It has that second step in the final pyramid. It's so glamorous. And there's a climber up there. He must have been just like Maori when Odell saw Maori and Irving and the, uh, going through the mists. There's a climber there without oxygen, and he's bending over. He must be kind of vomiting and sick and excited at the same time and wondering if it, he's going to get up there. He's probably got another 30 minutes before he gets to the summit. And he's without oxygen. Well, uh... I think about you. Oh, oh. Uh, I saw you. I saw you on the pyramid. I saw you trying. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. We're doing it. We saw you. We saw you, Congratulations, you knucklehead. Okay, Slava. Deep breath. Hard or short? Deep breath. Good. Okay, now hard. That's good. Strong. Good. Hard or short? 
Do you have that ache or whatever? Here, take your finger back and forth. Not the nose. No, no, no. And then finger down. Okay, Brian. Good touch. Just put it really late. Here, your nose. And you have to get up the pole. We have a thousand feet to go. No Say problem. goodbye <laughs> to your friends who just made the top. Good job. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Good luck. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Bravo. Good, luck. Good, luck. Good, luck. Good luck. Good luck. It is a severe mountain. Cold and treacherous. Quite frankly, the game is not good enough. The risks of getting caught up high are too great. The margin of strength for men at these altitudes is too small. <laughs> there it is. A prodigious white fan. An excrescence from the jawbone of the earth. <laughs> the undiminished glory of Mount Everest. Perhaps it is folly to go up again. But how can I keep out of the hunt? Effort I've ever had to make. Oh. I'll just oh. say to Jeff, I realize I'm not a young man anymore. I'm not young. I wish the old boy was alive. I wish Captain Dole was alive. This is for him, this. I'm climbing this for him. It's the hardest thing I've done in my life. It's hateful. Hateful. My guts. I get him. Captain Noel will never forgive me. That's what it's for, a great old man. at my privates. You're almost up.
Oh, I'm the dark call. I never thought I'd get it. Captain doing all the bureaucrats and soldiers and frontiers. Oh, I died. I thought I was finished. Captain, no! I've got up. I'm here. I never thought I'd get up here. Oh, God. It's wonderful. How far has it gone? Arigo, arigo, pakia, pakia, watia! Kamiti, kamiti, kaura, kaura! Kamiti, kamiti, kaura, kaura! Kamiti, tangata, puru, uru! Manama, fikita, tikitare! Ahupane, 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 kupane, fikitira! Did you hear it? This was a crucial time in the expedition. There were to have been four assault parties, but the weather was so awful there could only be two before the monsoon hit. Norton and Somerville went first without oxygen and were beaten back at over 28,000 feet. Mallory decided to make one last attempt with the 23-year-old Andrew Irving using oxygen. Odell would provide backup. They set off for the final attempt on June the 2nd. Dear girl, this has been a bad time altogether. I look back on tremendous efforts and exhaustion and dismal looking out of a tent door into a world of snow and vanishing hopes. <laughs> and yet, and yet there, there have been a good many things to set on the other side. The party has played up wonderfully, and the issue Sure to be decided. They have counted our wounded and know roughly how much to strike off the strength of our little army as we plan the next act of battle. <laughs> Telegram announcing our success will <laughs> precede this letter, I suppose. I will hope that I am one of the conquerors.
I'm only myself to blame for this. It's my stomach. It, I've never had a stomach ache like it. My eyes, my head's all right. I don't feel anything serious. My, my mouth, my lips are stuck together. I try and clear them with my lips. And they all get stuck together. All get stuck together. It's absolute. It's hell. I never envisaged this. It's just hell. I hate the sight of that hill. I had this dream about Mallory. Well, it was a horrible dream. It was a nightmare, you know. I mean, it just wasn't a dream. It was so vivid, you know. It was like a vision. About three or four o'clock in the morning, I woke up in the tent, and it was kind of fuzzy at the sides, and then this magnetic picture of Mallory. And he was coming down the road towards me, and he was just steaming, running ahead, and saying, I hate what you're doing. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And his eyes were so piercing. I was so shocked that he hated me so much. And he came towards me at speed. You know, he's renowned for his kind of uh, grace in movement, but he, it was easy to sidestep him. And he went through this wooden fence, broken wooden fence, and then he stuck his hands straight through the fence, trying to grab me. And then I grabbed his, I grabbed his wrist and I said, stop it, stop it. And he said, well, I hate it. I hate what you're doing. I, I don't want publicity. I don't want this. I don't want filming. And I said, stop. You're, I said, you're a hypocrite. I said, young husband said that you always wanted a label. You always wanted to be well known. You wanted to be famous. And that's why we're telling your story, because nobody knows about your marvelous story. I said, what I am doing is good. It's pure. It's true. And he, he went still, his eyes were horrible. I mean, they're still pierced, but then he, he lowered his head and his hands went slack in my grip. And uh, he seemed to reluctantly accept what I was saying. But, I mean, it was a shock to me, considering my kind of love for the man in his, the subject matter. You know, it left me feeling awful, and uh, it just has haunted me. It was, uh, he was lousy. It was horrible. Shadows covering the first step. And there, look, it's coming through. Look, you can see it. It's coming. There's the second step. That's where they were last seen. There they are. That's where they went. That's where they went. Over there, it's up to the final pyramid. Look how close it is. I could touch it. Very slowly. This is soft. Underneath. It's, it's like tiles. It's like you just slip like on tiles. Gonna sail to the top this time. God willing, I'll stab to the top with our teeth in the wind.
The Chinese, the stumped us every bit of the way. They've, they want us off the mountain in three days. We're risking being put in prison coming up here to talk about this dream. God, I'm proud of you. You dragged it up. I like this light pack, and you carried it all up. You've been heroes, and you're in my heart forever. You're wonderful, you're great. You make all the puny bureaucracy look idiotic and impotent. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting this stupid middle-aged fool up to 25,000 feet on this great, gorgeous, noble, majestic mountain. Thanks. I can understand why Mallory and Murphy were driven on. There's just nowhere. I've got to stop. I'll never get back. I won't get home. I'm sorry, Captain Noel. If you had been with them, if you'd been with Mallory and Irving, well, would you have wanted any better grace than the white snow of Everest? Should be playing little John, not keeping Cosmos understand. I don't think I need anything on my skin. Eh? Oh, you what do you think? Yeah, it's I hate powdering the face. It doesn't look organic. Oh, it's just, it's Can you give me a line of the eyes just to bring out the kind of yes. strength of the eyes and gets the women and makes me sexy? Just, I can understand him taking risks. I can understand Mallory's obsession because I'm just as obsessed. When I was up there, I thought nothing on God's earth would ever draw me back again when the cold and the horror of altitude and, and the pain of, of climbing at altitude, I was experiencing all that. But now that I've got back, I want to go back again. I can, I can understand him going back three times. I'm fully capable of, of going back three times. Uh, I, I just, uh, I don't know an answer to it. I just, I want to go back. And it really dominates my thinking. I find it very difficult to get back to acting. The king shall hear of this. Acting seems now slightly unreal. God unlocks me! Yeah! What I've experienced there is so real. And I, acting comes a very poor second to it, really. At the end of the day, for me, it's make-believe. Whereas Everest was completely real. I've always felt unreal as a person. I'm now reasonably content and satisfied until I go again. But I have to go back. And it is, though it is a quieter feeling now, I would say the obsession and the yearning to go back is deeper than before. <laughs> 